Welcome to our channel. I'm Jill and my partner is Charles. We have been living off-grid in Vermont for just over a year. We moved here from Dallas, Texas. One of the things that we love most about our property is getting to know the local wildlife. And when we first arrived last May, we were greeted by a beautiful bird called an indigo bunting. The male came out and claimed his territory. Our little clearing in the forest is a perfect habitat for indigo buntings. They like to patrol their territory from high up in the trees, but they forage and nest close to the ground, using the bushes and shrubs for cover, or in our case, the ferns. These ferns are called common bracken, and they died back in the wintertime, so they had just popped out of the ground themselves when the indigo buntings returned from their migration in the middle of May. And I'm really excited to see that the indigo buntings are building a nest right between the yurt and the RV. We actually saw a baby bunting fledge there last year in that same vicinity. So we suspect that the same pair have returned to raise another brood this year. For a few days, the female bunting kept coming and going from the ferns, and even the male came around to take a peek once in a while. It was not easy to film the nest building in there, and we didn't want to disturb the birds. So the structure was almost finished by the time we got this picture. And a few days after that, we peeked in on at least two eggs while the female was out foraging. about the chicks at this stage is that they are completely silent. They do open their mouths as soon as their mother arrives, but they don't make a peep. That makes sense to me since their little nest is only about as high off the ground as my knee. Adult indigo buntings are pretty omnivorous, but they make an effort to capture insects to feed their fast-growing offspring. These babies are so small, each meal is quite a mouthful. And this mother seems extremely preoccupied with making sure these big hunks of food don't get stuck in anybody's tiny little throat. She also monitors carefully for waste and carries it off to get rid of it.
Charles and I were impressed that these naked-looking babies could keep each other warm while their mother was off gathering food, and we were amazed by the amount of hard work their mother put into feeding them, about ten times in an hour. So here's what they looked like just four days later. Now that the chicks are so far along, they can swallow just fine on their own at this stage, and they are finally finding their voices. I think that becomes especially important when they leave the nest, because they may be able to get around now, but they can't eat unless their mother is able to find them. Good afternoon. I'm out here with the indigo buntings, and you can hear them in the bracken ferns talking to each other. There's the male who sings his heart out from dawn till dusk almost every day, although today he seems more preoccupied with keeping track of his family members. So he's making that same chipping noise that you hear from the others. Sounds like the babies are getting fed right now. There are three birds still in that nest today. One left the nest yesterday and is on the ground somewhere. Good morning. I came outside today and the homing beacon noises in the bushes seem to have multiplied. Let's go check on the buntings. I think some more of them may have left the nest. Looks like one lonely little bird still in the nest and everybody else is in the bushes. The bunting family dispersed quickly after the last little guy left the nest, but we still hear the male defending his territory. Sometimes there are even two males chasing each other around, and we can't be sure which is the resident and which is the challenger. It's the battle of the buntings. But whoever wins, I hope we'll see another nest later in the summer. And of course, we'll keep you posted. Thanks so much for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.